Well, I'm going to start off tonight a little differently. Now, a lot of you have seen this illustration. I just brought my little thing. Because um, I do have people that come in that have not been in my office, so they don't understand where we're coming from. And I don't know that I gave this the last time when I was there, but one of the first questions a lot of people ask me is because we're so associated with like new age and things along those lines, and people say, okay, you're doing things that people in that camp do, so what makes us different? Or what makes what I do different in my office? And as a Christian, and I will preface this, just because a person's a Christian does not mean they're getting into something that they shouldn't be. So it doesn't, you know, aren't covered by saying, well, I'm a Christian, because there are Christians who have gone, I say, gone into that world who don't maybe understand or they're playing around with things that they probably shouldn't. But um, the easiest way I try to explain it is that I serve a creator who is separate from his creation. He created what we use in the world as energy or the herbs or things in uh, the world. But they never come together in uh, the area of New Age. They will say, well, the energy is a force and there's some kind of mystic part of that that's connected to God. So we energy, God energy, we're one, but we're not. We never will be. And that's probably the biggest difference in what um, I, at least the way I feel about what I'm doing, is I'm using creation, but I serve a creator. And also, when you are in that realm of things, we have to um, understand that uh, we bring to it maybe our philosophy or our religion or beliefs to the practice also. So when we're talking about an acupuncturist who has more of a, you know, who's a Buddhist, they're going to bring their Buddhist philosophies with them into this practice of acupuncture. So they've already brought in like the, uh, you know, false gods or even demonic activity Whereas a Christian, too, I don't believe that I'm doing that because I'm just using creation. I'm not trying, you know, we make jokes of this, but we have chickens in the backyard, but we don't kill our chickens and hang them from the trees. You know? Now, my sons do, but <laughs> not for that purpose. Um, but we, we make fun of that, but we don't do that. And, and even though I ask the Lord to give me wisdom in the morning before I open my office, I don't technically burn incense and pray over everybody in that context where other uh, practitioners might do that too. But it's definitely bringing back to that world. Um, and there, if at any time we, we sense, my husband and I especially sense that there's something that's coming in, whether through another person or uh, maybe something new we're starting to use that we feel that maybe it's, I say, crossing that line, we are always asking the Lord to give us discernment for that and then take it out of there because if there's questionable parts of what we're doing, then we don't need to be doing that. Okay. So that's, uh, I hope that's one thing that's been a benefit to people that have come, that they've felt comfortable. And even though anybody's been in my office, you know, we still have some weird things that we can't technically always explain. But it's not because it's, there's a mystical part of it. Because the scientific uh, community has given us a lot of explanation for what we're doing, even though maybe muscle testing specifically seems a little weird on the surface, but we can duplicate, duplicate that with technology, and that's what they've been doing for since even 1960s, a lot through Germany and those have come in. So, and I've done a lot of studies per personally to see, okay, what am I doing that cannot be duplicated? then that's those areas that I might, you know, shy away from. Uh, one area that I do bring up and that I've never been able to justify, and I, I'm not here to offend anybody, but I think Reiki is one that's, I've never, you know, I've tried to look at all these different areas. It's kind of a hands-on type of thing, but it's Japanese, and it seems that, um, that it's so much connected to the Japanese religion that I can't separate it from that. Where, like I could say, okay, acupuncture I can use because it doesn't have to be part of a religion. I could just use the practice. But there's a few things that are very difficult 
um, to separate. And Reiki is one. So, you know, if you've had Reiki or you know of Reiki and you have somebody that does it, uh, you know, I'm not trying to defend you, but it's one that I've looked at for quite a few years and I cannot justify it in my world. So, just to give that as an example. But most other ones we've been able to see more of a scientific part of it. Okay. And so then we go to this chart, too, to help us to understand more specifically, we'll say, energy medicine. And uh, I start out, at, again, as a Christian, that's where I'm coming from. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and that your, um, better read out being free. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what I do, uh, this is not mine. I've gotten it from other, uh, actually, a Christian counselor who actually uses the same illustration. So the outside ring, we say, is the body. And that's the physical part of us. What we can see, what we can touch, even as far as, you know, if you had surgery, they can operate on your heart and you can see it. It's physical. There's something there. Uh, and this is where the medical community mainly works in because they are about what you can see. This middle we'll call the spirit, and that's our relationship with God. Uh, and that's personal. That's where you have to just kind of work that out. Now, but this middle ground we'll call the soul. And I also say, you know, as creation, this is who we are, defined by God. And I believe being three parts, that goes back to God created us in his image. And him being a trinity, I believe there is that correlation there. That he has made us three uh, in one in that sense. But the soul area is that energetic body that we uh, go to. And this is, uh, we do know that our soul does not die. When we die, our body goes in the ground and our soul lives on. And that's energy. It's not a physical being. Uh, we also have in this soul layer the mind, which is the computer of, our, computer of our body, which is different than the brain. The brain is the organ that holds everything, but the mind is the working mechanism. We also have life blood talked about. Leviticus 17.11 talks about the life blood. And this, I don't think, is always necessarily the red stuff that runs through our veins. I think it has to do with the energy or what makes us alive. Um, we also have emotions as part of this character and will. And one thing you notice with all these, they're pretty much, uh, they're not tangible. You can't touch them. And that's what, when we come to this part of things, and that's the biggest part of my world and where I work in, uh, in energy medicine, that there's nothing there to touch or to see. But we can see results, and hopefully that's what validates what we do more than anything. And of course, I've been doing this for many years, going on 13 years now, so I can look back and say, yes, we saw those results, and that validates it for me, even if maybe there's some the weirdness in that. And hopefully those of you that have come to see me, and we've seen some of those things too. But um, this uh, helps some people just to, to get into this world a little bit better, to understand, even though we still don't always understand it. Um, how many people have never seen muscle testing at all? Anybody? You've never seen muscle testing? Okay. So what I thought we would do, just real quick, because that's not what I, my main purpose is tonight. Muscle testing is tapping into the energies that, like the uh, acupuncturist would be using. Um, it doesn't use needles. You don't have to do that. But there, um, there are 12 meridians in our body, and they're kind of like stem, extension cords going to each organ and gland. And what happens is if something comes into our body as energy, and it doesn't matter where it starts, it's going to go through the whole system. It takes 24 hours for uh, some impulse to go through that whole, whole system. But that energy, even though it's invisible, acts on our muscles. And it basically, we could use any muscle to do this. But I'm going to use an arm muscle. So who wants to be my, uh, my guinea pin tonight? Come on. <laughs> and I'll show you. We'll show those that haven't had it done before. And I'm going to turn you this way. Just turn on this side because I can do it better from this side. Is this arm okay to do? Yeah, do. Okay, so what I would have you do is put your arm out. And I'm going to push down. And she's going to resist my arm or my pushing down. Resist, okay? And we always feel it up in your shoulder that it's kind of locking into place. Resist. Okay. Now, I didn't think of something. Let me see if there's something in here. But I can 
Okay, that goes with down. <laughs> Put your arms down. <laughs> Something that, what we're basically saying is, what, what's going to cause a negative effect on her body is going to take away the um, strength in her arm. So I, that's why I was just finding something real fast. Okay, resist. See how she bounces there? If they do feel that bouncing, it's bouncing. Okay, we're going to take this and put this down. I'm going to stay in the front of it. We're going to come back, resist, and see her strength comes back. I'm going to push harder, resist, and she can hold on. And now I'm putting this back in her hand. Okay, resist. And she can't hold it. Because, and I'm not asking any questions. Go ahead and relax a minute. Um, some people that do this themselves, you have to be clear on what your, your intent is. Because if you have an intent that you're confused about, you might get a wrong answer. <laughs> it's kind of, and it's not like asking questions, okay? That's where a lot of people get into trouble when they start asking questions. You can't ask a question. It's just basically strong or weak, yes or no, okay? So you can't ask, you know, what are you going to have for dinner tomorrow night? I mean, that doesn't work. Her body can only say yes, no, strong, weak. So you don't want to get too complicated. And that's why I say when you're doing muscle testing, you should not have a big intent. You just, you don't really have anything in your mind. If you can stay neutral, let her body answer, and you wouldn't have that either. But just basically, is this going to give her, have a bad effect on her? And that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm not asking any questions and I'm here talking, but I push on her arm and she goes weak. That means this is not, not only is it a not a, it's not a neutral, but her body doesn't like this because it feels what's in here without having to take it. And it's saying, oh, I don't like that. Energy goes down and then we can see on her muscles that it goes down too. Okay? That's the simplest way. And you can use that at home um, with your kids or with your, you know, family members just to kind of get an idea if something is bad. But there again, and I'll say this again, don't think of a question. <laughs> That's where you get in trouble. A lot of people, when I test them, I'll get one thing and they say, well, I tested it at home and it was okay. Like, what were you testing though? Where did you have an intent? Was it like a vitamin where you're saying, okay, would this vitamin help me? Well, you forgot to ask if it was going to hurt you. <laughs> it might help you in one way, but it might also hurt you. But that's why I say when you get into asking questions, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Just hold it. Have no thing. Just use the muscle. That will tell you if it's okay. If strong is okay. It's not going to hurt anything. It doesn't really tell you that it's really good for you. But it's okay. But if you put something in your like we did for her. And that was a little bit by the way. That's a long thing. <laughs> But your body just did not like that. So you can play around with that. That's the most basic muscle testing you can do. And I think that's a good place to start. Um, now I do my own muscle testing surrogate in my office. I use my finger and because our energy does not stop at our uh, skin, you're kind of like in a bubble, then I can feel what your energy is doing. When your energy goes dropping off, I can feel it. I can also test it on my fingers. I'm not testing myself, but I'm testing whoever. And my little pinky is kind of like your arm. But if that pinky goes weak or you go weak and I test it, it will pull through the O-ring. It's actually my pinky that pops out and allows my fingers to pull through. Or if it's strong, like just like your arm stays strong, I will feel strong and my fingers will not unlock. And that's how I do it in my office. I'm just that surrogate testing. You can do that too, but it's really... It takes a lot of practice to do this. So if you want to play with this at home, the arm is the easiest one to feel because even the person you're testing can feel if it unlocks or doesn't. You don't even have to determine that. It doesn't have to be a lot. I don't try to push somebody's arm down. Sometimes if somebody does it, they try to, you know, push it down. Well, it doesn't have to. It just has to bounce. That tells you it's loose. It's either strong or weak. It doesn't have to have a full blown falling out. But those are things you can start playing with. There are a lot of different ways to do muscle testing. Um, but if you have somebody to help you, the easiest one is always going to be the arm. And you just, the best way is kind of come across, like I was doing with Susan, come across to the opposite arm and just using it that way. Okay? Do you have any questions about that? Anybody? I mean, we could talk all night about muscle testing. <laughs> Go ahead. When you uh, take a medication, for example, mm -hmm. Testing shows that it's not healthy, and that you do something that uh, neutralizes that. What, uh -huh. is that. what is that process? Well, we, on that little box I use, I can actually put a homeopathic of 
the medicine in that. And any time you use a homeopathic, which is the dilution of that substance, it kind of, it doesn't really neutralize it, but it takes away the side effects. So you're taking the medicine and it doesn't take any of that effect off, but it's giving the homeopathics that take away some of the side effects, just kind of balance it out in your body. Uh, and that usually will work. Um, sometimes it doesn't. But, and that's what we say, if you're taking a medicine, it actually can be a positive for what you're taking it for, but it can be stressing something else. And that's what we want to get away from, that extra stress, because if you're taking something for your heart, you don't want it, your stomach getting tore up because of it. Unfortunately, a lot of times medicines will have those two effects. So we found that we can do that with the homeopathic in the medicine and change the effects of the medicine, but it will actually allow you to continue to take it. Uh, the only downside is it's for that one bottle. So each time you get a new bottle, you got to get a new, uh, you know, on the box to do that. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started tonight. Um, we are going to do more what I call herbal medicines or supplements or just healthy living. Um, the last time some of you that were there, uh, you came for homeopathics. We're going to try to not do homeopathics tonight. <laughs> we did tape it. Uh, we are getting it uh, onto a disc. We had a little glitch because my son uh, put the camera away and he was gone for two weeks. <laughs> so we didn't get it done, but we will be having that. So if you miss that, you'll be able to get that on tape and uh, learn more about that. And I do have some of those things up here. You can go ahead and take those if you are a little familiar with that. But uh, tonight we're going to start off. Uh, I gave you one sheet to start off with, and I was looking over this. It was an older sheet, but. A couple of the things on here have changed. Um, natural health care, actually, um, that's Wiser Alternative Health, is now the CEWsystem.com. Uh, we have changed that. It doesn't even take you. If you went on there, you wouldn't get it now because we take, got rid of that one completely. Um, there's some homeopathic care. Uh, that first one is a good book. I have books up here, and we also covered that in the last time. We do have a new book that I found that's easy to uh, use to. So we have two books now. Uh, this one's for infant children, but it's not just for infant children. Homeopathics is across the board. It's for adults, kids, animals, <laughs> anybody. So even if you have this book, you can use it for whoever. But this one I think is the simplest and easiest to use. This one is good too, though, if you get the hang of it, it's just set up a little different. Okay. Uh, as you go down through there, we have some allergies and diet. Uh, there's different things along there that you might be interested in. One person we were talking about, the bread beckers, if you're interested in bread making. They have a lot of great information, like for gluten-free, uh, if you're going to use different kind of um, flours. They get heavy, and they tell you how to you know, use less of them and some of the other. I have not experimented as much as I would like, but I would say that is one that you would want to use if you were interested in playing around with that. Um, this one above it, Baby Organic, this is a great formula. It is um, a milk base, but it's organic, and we've used it for a lot of the um, formulas now where soy and kids just do horrible on it. Of course, I do advocate uh, nursing first, if possible. But uh, people that would, we have people that adopt children that need to use formula, and this has been a great product, so I gave some of those for you. Um, our food co-op, we do have that going on. That's out of Rock Hill, so I don't know how many of you could tap into that. Um, we might do a little bit tonight on vaccination, but this gives you some areas to look into. I would say that Think Twice, I've had that for as long as I've been around, and it's one of the most powerful websites to really look at. It's done by a lot of parents who have children that have been um, affected by the vaccines. Um, up at the top, Herb Doc. This is a, we do have some of his formulations. It's Dr. Schultz, uh, if you've heard of him. We do use his because he doesn't practice anymore. They shut him down so many times. <laughs> he says, I'm not going to practice anymore. I'm just going to sell product. And he doesn't care if you make it. Most people don't. But he puts his recipes out there. His website is just packed full of stuff. If you just are really into this, he's got lectures, he's got articles, if you really want to look into it. Now, I will say he's, he's not a Christian man, and he's a tree hugger, and he's out there weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, but, but he studied with Dr. Jensen some of the most 
a famous um, herbalist of all time. And so he really knows his stuff and his formulas are all very powerful. They're, I say they're not with me. They're going to work. Our formula one, if any of you use our formula one, and this is, that's his formula that we were able to use our green food. Um, but actually formula two, uh, what else have we used from him? You know? But we just made a new one. We just got another one. We've used it, but we've never made it before. It's called snuff. <laughs> we need to get, I guess we call it stuff sinus relief. We decided to call it something. But what it is, it's made with golden seal. If you've ever had congestion or had tightness and you couldn't get rid of it, this stuff will cure you. <laughs> but it's it's like powder and you just suck it up your nose and it, you sneeze and you, you know, do everything, and cough and sputter. But, it's very powerful. And Karina did finally, we had somebody asking about it. Maybe she did finally go ahead and start making it. So if for winter, you might want to get yourself a little bag of, <laughs> of sinus relief. <laughs> but that's his formula, too. Like I said, none of his stuff is with me. It works. <laughs> um, then Dr. Huggins, he's probably the most knowledgeable about dental information. You know, we sometimes talk about root canals, amalgam fillings getting things out. He's got a lot of information there, too. Um, a few chiropractors, which there's tons of chiropractors around here. I know it, up in this area, there's some really great ones. Uh, again, I will throw this out. Chiropractors kind of straddle the fence. <laughs> some are very medically minded, even though they can't prescribe uh, medicines, and then others are more alternative in their practicing. So you have to just kind of find one. I personally like a chiropractor that's considered upper cervical or low force. That means they don't take you and twist you in pretzel shapes. <laughs> Some people like it. My husband loves that. I can't see that. I just want low force, nice upper cervical, because if your upper cervical is not uh, balanced and set, the rest of it's never going to get into. So those are just some guidelines, you know, if you want to talk to it. But there's a lot of great chiropractors, but there's a lot of bad ones too. <laughs> and then midwife, there's a service they are in South Carolina, but they're just on the border, right there in Fort Mill area, because North Carolina midwifery is illegal. South Carolina is not. So they kind of put it that close so people in this area could tap into that. And I do know one of the main women there, they have a good practice going there, too. So just some of the things that uh, would help you to do a little research on your own. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask. Okay. So let's jump into um, some of the things that we have up here. And I think what I'll do is probably just go down the line. And tonight, we're not here to sell product, okay? We do have product. We try to keep things for people. But um, we're not here to sell, but we're trying to educate on things that we found. We can't carry everything, but we try to keep things that we know we can make better, especially herbals. Uh, we do make our own herbal formulas, pretty much. Um, supplements, we don't so much. Karina is my daughter. She's studying to be a master of list, and she's pretty much taken over our, if you come to the office, our, our beam ray and our foot bathroom. <laughs> so she's working more with people, learning some else to testing too. But she's making all our herbal formulas right now. Um, some of the things we have, we, um, let's see, uh, let's let me talk about things so if we get behind, we don't lose that. Um, one thing that I think if you don't have anything, this is the one product I tell people. It's called Robbers. It's a essential oil. Essential oils are different than herbs because they the oils have been extracted. They're most the most powerful part of a plant that we can get is the essential oil. It's made from clove, cinnamon, thyme, and lemon. It was originally made by the co a company called Young Living. That was one of the main essential oils. Um, unfortunately, they're an upline too. I was saying a little bit about that earlier. Hey, how are you doing tonight? Come on in. Um, it's they, they're an upline, and anytime you have the upline concept, you got to pay people money to do it, and just get the price goes up and up and up. This company is an upline, but he's he's not. He's one man operating him his wife, so they haven't gotten to that big company yet. When you call, you're going to get him or his wife. <laughs> And um, they're called Ancient Wisdom. Uh, and this is called Ancient Lovers. <laughs> but the, the uh, story behind these, the other company is Thieves, this is Robbers. And what they did is back when they had like the plagues in Europe, 
um, they had people going in and leaving homes. And when they finally caught these people, these guys, they said, why weren't you not afraid to go into these homes because you weren't you worried about getting the plague? And they said no because they had this formula, supposedly. And that's where they've gotten the name. But we have found out in our practice that this is probably the most powerful thing as far as um, an antimicrobial. Uh, we've used this in our family. I have five children, my husband and myself, my mom too, my sister. <laughs> and we as a family have not been to the doctor in about 15 years. Uh, except for broken arms. <laughs> um, and it's not that we're much healthier than everybody else. We still get flus. We still have had strep infections at, point, at certain points. But we have consistently used this. We've done other things too, but this was the one product I believe that's kept us healthy, uh, helped us to get over those bacterial infections that we did get, just like other people. And so I tell people, if you want one thing, this would be the product. Now, we don't even use this straight. Um, when you get this product, I give you a bottle like this. Of course, this has something else in it. But I give you this bottle because this is uh, so potent. And it can, uh, if you put it on straight, it can be burning. Now, if people have put this in their eye, and it doesn't hurt their eye. But it's burning because it has cinnamon, clove. If you ever use those products, you know they're burning. Uh, and it won't hurt you, but we prefer that it not burn. <laughs> So we use it with olive oil, 20 drops in a bottle, and we dose out of this. So if you did get this, this would last you a long time because you're only using 20 drops at a time, and then this bottle will last you. And another thing, you um, not supposed to tell you to use these things internally, but we do. <laughs> uh, but it, the good thing is they work externally by putting them just on things. You have sore throat, you just put it on your throat. I like to put it on my sinuses, rub it around the ears. You don't even have to put it internally. And you're going to get a lot of the same effect with that. So this would be, if you wanted to have one thing, this would be on the top of the list that everybody should do, especially if you have children. <laughs> this is the one thing you want. So it's around essential oils. There are many essential oils. But I carry a few. Robbers is one. Another one I carry is peppermint oil. Now, if anybody's been in my office, you know that digestive enzymes, and we'll get to that, the digestive enzymes are good and work really well. But right next to those, an essential oil that's a good digestive product is peppermint oil. Um, if you have a dig indigestion or you're just feeling like things aren't good, <laughs> peppermint oil is another one that works really good. And sometimes if you take a lot of digestive enzymes in between, it's nice to have some peppermint oil, and I just take it. I'll just drop one drop on my tongue and it'll just take care of things. Um, can that help for chemo patients that have, um, after their treatment, that will have esophagus and stuff? Well, I would assume because it's digestion. I can't really talk on that because I've not really used it for that. I have anybody that has used it. But if it's digestive issues, um, I guess the only thing I would be concerned, you always have to be careful because sometimes when people have chemo, problems, their esophagus and things. And then you're kind of dealing with that. It's, it's a structural problem as, public, as opposed to just a digestive issue. And you would want to be careful. But it, it might be. If they put a drop of that in yogurt or something and had it that way, would that make any difference or not? Um, it probably would be just as good. I don't think it would, but I, again, it's just being very careful. If you know, if you have a bird esophagus, you have to just be careful. And that does happen quite often. Mm -hmm. but this would definitely be a digestive thing if you're having a you know, acid reflux or something. Or digestive enzyme, enzymes might be a better place to start because they're not as intense mm -hmm. as the oil. So is the, is the peppermint oil, is it antibacterial? Also? What was that? The peppermint oil, is it antibacterial? No, that's more just a digestive relief for digestion. I mean, peppermint oil is good for a lot of things. It's one of those all around things. but. If you're really, for what I would say, I know it works for digestive things. I have people that use peppermint oil for a lot of things. Um, you know, we could go through the list, but you could try. There's a PDRs on essential oils, just like there are for medications, and you could look up peppermint oil, or even on the internet, if you pull it up, it would tell you all the uses they thought it was good for, too. Well, the problem, as you said, it was uh, antimicrobial. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 
are we talking about viral and bacterial? Yes, uh -huh. and maybe fungal too, but there are some that I believe are more powerful for fungal specifically, but viruses and bacteria, yes. Mm -hmm. That's what we would definitely use them for. And that's good because, you know, there's not a lot of antiviral, because virals are not going to be harmed the same way. But this will work on viruses the same. So when you have a cold, it helps you get over it. Okay, so um, I brought this along tonight. I know it's July, but it might be time to start because I've seen three cases of flu this week. So, um, including one of my daughters. So. <laughs> so I think it's early. We usually wait till about October to start this, but this is the one that seems to match. Um, we tried gel simium, we looked at arsenicum, but I think this one's the closest one for that flu that I'm seeing, which is more, you know, it's stomach, fever, diarrhea, that's what it looks like. So this is matching. So uh, as a preventative, <laughs> if you start seeing people around your area, you might want to start this. And, and we did today. <laughs> I gave it to my whole family today. Uh, the way we use this is oscillum, that's what I call it. You can get this most drugstores. And it's a homeopathic, it's actually the bird flu. That's what it is made from, the bird flu. But you st we usually start in October, but starting now, Going once a month, it's a preventative for the flu. We go usually all the way through March or April even. Um, everybody gets one. If you have big families, you can actually take one and put it in a jar and dose it with as water, and it's just the same. Um, if you start seeing the flu around you, maybe once a week, and then if it gets in the house, you know, start dosing everybody <laughs> once a day. <laughs> Twice a day, if somebody has the flu, of course, you can use the water dosing um, to use that. But, but I am seeing already, I don't know where it came from, but it looks like the flu and it tests as the flu. So, so if you have fossil at home, fossil and toxin is actually the whole thing. But um, you can get this for I have some with me tonight, but you can do that. And to, uh, I'm not talking about homeopathics tonight, but if you buy these in a little pack, they're going to say, Take this whole thing and dump it down your throat. It's homeopathic. Homeopathic is communication, not substance. It's not chemical. You only need one of these little tiny pills in here. <laughs> if you buy a three pack, it should last you for years. <laughs> Technically, it shouldn't. So don't say, I mean, they're just trying to sell you a lot more. <laughs> uh, one pill, one bottle of pills, a whole jar of pills. They're not going to do anything more for you. It's communicating something to your body, not giving you, it's not the aspirin concept. One aspirin works, two aspirins work better. Homeopathics don't work that way. Communicating something to your body so it can do something for itself. So one little pill per person. Yes, ma'am? And when you were talking about the dose in the jar, what would that be? You can do like a teaspoon or a tablespoon. Again, it technically doesn't matter. So one, one in a jar and a teaspoon per person? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where you can stretch it out. And another thing, I don't want to start in homey puppets because then I'll get off of that trail. But and when you do that with the jar, if you're going to redose, take the jar and hit it on your hand because then you energize a little bit more and it changes the communication. It just your body won't say, Well, I already had this. It said, Oh, this is a little different. <laughs> so if you're going to give it a second dose, hit it on your hand. That's why it's not good to give multiple doses of just this because it's the same stuff and the more you give it the more body's going to say i already got this no <laughs> i already heard this <laughs> but by doing it in the water then you can actually change it and uh, you get a little more effective with this okay so we we do have some of this tonight if you would like it but if not you can usually get it from i think even walmart carries it now <laughs> i think everybody's caught on to it but it is homeopathic okay any more questions about this? Okay. All right, so let's move in. I like to talk about digestive enzymes because a lot of people have digestive issues. Um, this is just a brand I can. This is a professional brand. You won't be able to buy this, but digestive enzymes you're going to get a lot of places. They're not hard to find. But you do want to look for a complete enzyme or digestive enzyme. There are technically five things you need in an enzyme. You need amylase for sugar. Lipase for fats, protease for proteins, 
cellulase for fiber or vegetables, and lactates more for milk. Now if you go and buy a protease product, the only thing you're going to really be doing is digesting proteins. If you now they do have, and I haven't done a big study on this, some of my friends have, but I have products that I know work, so I just keep them. Um, like some people will say they take papaya or something and they're supposed to work really good. I can't tell you yes or no, okay? If they work for you, great. You keep using them. <laughs> and maybe they do have enough enzymes to cover the gamut. But I do know if you don't cover each kind of food that you're trying to digest, you're only digesting part of your food, like just the proteins or just the whatever. Um, so when you do buy one, you want to look in the back, make sure they have at least those five. You might have more, and that's fine, um, but those are the biggies. Um, so what digestive enzymes are? They will never cure anything. They don't take food allergies away, but they are a great band-aid. <laughs> if you have food allergies, they're going to help you digest your food better so that when it goes through the small intestines, if you, especially if you have leaky gut, if it gets in your system, you don't have these bigger food particles floating around for your immune system to be screaming about. It helps you to just calm down reaction. We do treat and supposedly cure food allergies in my office. But in the interim, we always try to get people on them if you have a lot of food allergies. But people also that have like acid reflux and things, please don't use Rolaids, Nexium, all those things that are for acid indigestion because here's what happens when you take those it neutralizes the hcl in your gut and guess what the job of the hcl is is to break down food so what did you do you just took away the ability to break down food and you're contributing to the problem now they do great on the gas but long term you're really messing your whole system up but that's where digestive enzyme works better because it breaks down the food breaks down that, uh, you know, getting the gas, where it, but it doesn't neutralize your HCL. So digestive enzymes is what you want to use when you have any kind of digestive issues, uh, especially like acid reflux. Now there's always a potential of having something else involved, you know. If you got a iota hernia, those kind of things, that's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about you eat and you get indigestion, probably because you didn't chew your food well, you drank too much water, and neutralized the acid in your stomach. By the way, that's another thing. You shouldn't drink a lot of water when you're eating. You should give your body, your body has what it needs to break down the food, but if you put a lot of water with it, you, or tea, or anything you should drink, um, that's not so good. So if you're drinking a lot of water or drinks with dinner, try to back off on that, because you'll give your body a better chance to digest the food. Okay. So digestive enzymes is another great thing. I don't advocate taking enzymes all the time. You don't, shouldn't need it. But I do keep some with me almost all the time, especially when you're going to eat out. Because when you eat out, you don't know what you're getting. <laughs> and there could be contamination from foods. And um, if you have a problem with one food and you tell your waiter, well, I don't want that, well, you don't know that you're going to not get that because they cooked it in the same kitchen and the pans. And <laughs> so just don't expect them to not give you what you need. But if you have an enzyme, it almost always will take care of that problem. So digestive enzymes are a great thing to have around, even if you don't take them on a regular basis. Okay. The next thing would be vitamin C. And again, if you have kids, you should have lots of vitamin C. <laughs> even if you don't have kids, you should have lots of vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C works as an immune booster. And it's a true immune booster. Uh, it will help to boost your body's ability to fight. Uh, and, and when I say vitamin C, we're not talking about, you know, 100 milligrams. We're talking sometimes big doses, especially when you're sick. Uh, one good thing about vitamin C is you can't really take too much. If you get too much in your system, you're going to get a flush. And what that means is you're just going to get like diarrhea. It's not a true diarrhea, but it's just that's vitamin C flushing out of your body because it's water soluble. you. So it just flushes and you say, okay, I got too much vitamin C. You can determine that if you get that flush. But even with kids, you know, you can't really hurt them. So if I had a, a child that was sick, you know, I would not have a problem with going right to like two, three thousand milligrams. 
because usually it's going to the benefits outweigh the you know the flush. And if you're not giving them enough, it's not going to really help them. You know, it's kind of like just give them a little tiny dose down here, and you need, especially when they're sick, and you want to get them. Uh, vitamin C also works on allergic reactions, like even anaphylactic shock. If you ever had somebody going into shock and they weren't unconscious, you can get them some vitamin C. The quicker you can get some vitamin C in them, the better. Um, I, ha I tell us, I like to tell some stories that, of course, we as practitioners do a lot of crazy things that I don't advocate with. <laughs> but we had a um, one of our homeopaths. Of course, we have emails and we all, all over the world, and we correspond. Of course, you have people on the other side of the world that are up when you're in bed and all that, but. I remember one night a woman had gotten bit by a rattlesnake. <laughs> and of course, we don't go to the hospital either. <laughs> so she's on the internet typing. This is like 2 in the morning, and I just happened to be up or something. But she was like, OK, what do I do? And we were trying to talk. Because another thing, when you're sick and something's wrong, your brain falls out. Everything you know just goes away. <laughs> you can't think logically. It's like, OK, emergency, what do I do? It's like, OK, we'll take vitamin C. And she was able, I think she took, I mean, thousands and thousands of vitamin C, and she never did go to the hospital. She was having a reaction and everything, but she never did. Uh, and that was just with vitamin C. Now, we have homeopathics we can use, too. But she was using that for the reaction she was having. So vitamin C is pretty powerful. I'd have vitamin C at home, too, um, for those kind of things. Um, and there's probably a lot of other things. If you have constipation and you're in a pinch, give them lots of vitamin C, and it probably will take care of it. It's not curing the constipation, but again, if you get enough in your system, you're going to flush, and that's going to help with that, too. Okay. Vitamin C, another great one. I recommend that to be taken for a child uh, constipated, because they're Yes, especially in the winter time, or if a child that has a tendency to be sick a lot, I would take it year round because it's cheap too. Vitamin C is pretty cheap, uh, and the only thing with chewables, you know, vitamin C and magnesium, which I'm going to talk about, these are sour. They taste like lemon, so they're almost always going to have a little bit of sugar or stevia in them. But get a vitamin C that only is vitamin C and a little sugar. Don't get something that's got a list of stuff because it's just junk. So find yourself just vitamin C. And for kids, of course, the easiest way is a chewable. Um, for adults, it's easy for a chewable because you chew it up and it gets right in there. Um, but yeah, uh, for kids, 500,000 milligrams usually is not a problem daily. Um, I took one lady, and we were trying to create a flush with her. And I mean, this was just mind-boggling. I had to call one of my friends and tell them about this one. We were trying to create a flush because she had a lot of problems with her colon and everything. We went up, to, she went up to 50,000 milligrams, 50,000, before she actually flushed. Now, once we flushed once, she was great, <laughs> but it took her 50,000 milligrams. I've never heard of that before, but it worked for her. And her body was just so, uh, it needed that boost, the immune system. And so, you know, it didn't kill her. <laughs> so, most people would not need more than five, six, probably ten would be a high dose for the very worst case, but but there again, 50,000. Pretty amazing. <laughs> yes, and I have flavonoids in the vitamin C. They have those. I still, after 12 years, I'm okay with that. Um, there are other things you need, but they're not a have to. And I'm still not quite sure everything they're supposed to be doing in there. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's like rose hips, different things that they call them, and I don't even know. I, I'm not a herbalist. I'm a hungry cat. Maybe my daughter, she'll learn why those bioflavonoids are in there. They have a purpose, but the vitamin C part is what we really want. What's the esters thing? Est it's a different kind, and I don't know that either. Some people swear by the ester seeds. I just go after the plain old vitamin C, citrate, you know, whatever. It's vitamin C. And they probably some work different for different people, but I'd say the generic works for me. I, I'm sorry, I can't answer that. <laughs> yeah. Um, another kind of all around product now, some people <laughs> tout magnesium as the miracle cure for everything. Well, the reason why it's uh, so called the miracle cure. <laughs> um, because it's one of the main minerals, magnesium, calcium, sodium, potassium. 
Calcium and magnesium go together, pair up. They have to be in balance. On the other side, potassium and sodium have to be in balance. Guess what we're usually depleted of? It's the magnesium. Probably, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Eight out of ten people need magnesium over any of the other ones. And so that's why when people take magnesium, it's so powerful for most people because most people don't have enough magnesium. It's not because you might not have enough magnesium. It's probably because you got too much calcium. And calcium will not come out of your system by itself. Now, like the vitamin C, magnesium will ha do a flush the same way. If you take too much, it's going to flush from your body. But calcium will not do that. Calcium usually gets stored in your joints. It'll create bone spurs, create kidney stones. And what's the first thing, women? You go to your doctor and they say, you don't want to have osteoporosis, so take some calcium. <laughs> but if you don't need calcium, what? Guess what? You're going to get that. You're going to have the other problems. Uh, just to throw this in, if you're interested, I won't talk on that tonight because it's not that. Dr. John Lee, if you want to do some research, proved 25 years, most osteoporosis is not a calcium problem, it's a progesterone, it's a hormone problem. If you have a problem, you take progesterone, you don't take calcium. So in most situations, a calcium problem is being created by taking it. And if you don't have enough magnesium, it's going to get stored. So that's why magnesium seems to be such a great product. It's not that great product, it's because of the other problems we're dealing with. Uh, with that. So uh, that's a mineral thing, uh, not a um, calcium problem. Okay? I don't want to get started too much. I could talk a long time on some of these issues and because <laughs> I have some passion about some of them because of what's being created. But I want to be able to get on tonight. Um, I also, let me just say that too, uh, on the other side of things, you know, we've been told for so many years that sodium is bad. Okay, well it's not bad because it's maybe one of the main four products we need. And I have been seeing a lot of people, especially on the hot days and things, people are coming in and low sodium. Now the thing is, you don't want to put more salt on your food. First of all, the salt we're using, unless it's sea salt or Celtic salt, it's not a good salt. <laughs> you shouldn't buy your salt from like Walmart. That salt needs to go. Um, you want to buy some good salt. But i found if you do have low sodium, and this comes, we, uh, for years too, we've heard, okay, if you have cramps in your legs, eat a banana because it has potassium. But again, remember, sodium and potassium have to be balanced. And sometimes it's not the potassium, it's the sodium. And i found the best way to get sodium is go get yourself some of the rock salt you know you make ice cream with. Put it in a pan of water and soak your feet in it for about 10 to 15 minutes. And your body will absorb it into the tissues. It's not going through your digestive tract, but it will absorb it into the tissues. And your cramping, if that's the problem, <laughs> will go away very quickly. And it usually, I haven't found, I mean, unless you're really having a problem, you probably won't hurt yourself doing that. Now, you don't want to do it every day for two weeks, because then you probably would, you know, get that imbalance really out. But um, look at that sometimes. It's not always going to be the potassium. It's going to be the sodium. Because here's a, this, I don't know if you can get this. I, this was amazing. I, somebody showed me this not too long ago. If you think of these mineral balances on a teeter-totter, and say you have calcium up here and magnesium's down here, but this is where normal is, okay? So what's normal? The magnesium's normal. The calcium's high. But what if you took that same teeter-totter and put it below the line and calcium was normal and magnesium was low? You see how we have two different issues here? So sometimes they're solved the same way, but depending on if you're above normal or below normal in what is the high or low. So sometimes what we would do, like taking potassium, might balance out the, the potassium-sodium issue, but if the potassium was on the high end, you're not really fixing it, or on the low end. <laughs> you didn't need to fix the potassium, you need to fix the um, sodium. Does that make sense? I mean, that was profound when I, somebody told me about that, because we just do what we think, but sometimes it's the perspective that you're coming from. So think about those four now. Don't just think about maybe 
calcium as being that thing, or even potassium. But think about the magnesium and the sodium that goes along with it. And those four are our big minerals, and that's what we need to keep balanced. If they're not balanced, then you're always going to have that pendulum swinging. But if, if you're in balance mineral-wise, you're going to be feeling so much better. You won't have the joint pain as much. You won't have the muscle pain. You're going to not have the you know, heart palpitations. <laughs> they, you're just going to feel so much better. And I'm not saying that's always easy. <laughs> because sometimes it's like, okay, what's out of sync? But think about the gamut. Don't just have a one mindset. Well, if I take this one thing, um, then it's going to fix it. So just keep that in mind. And on, that same, on those same lines then, um, I haven't used this a lot. I've used it myself at different times. But I'm starting to use it more with my people. Um, this is called cell salts. And they are homeopathic, but they're basically minerals that have been made, made homeopathically. They're usually a 6x potency, if you understand that. But it has the magnesium, it has sodium, it has the mag uh, calcium, and the potassium. It also contains um, iron and silica. Those are all the ones. There's 12. Now, like, there's calcium. There's three calciums. You know, there's more than one. There's calcium citrate, calcium phosphate, and those different ones. But this has 12 minerals. And being that it's homeopathic, it's not going to supplement, like if you took the supplement of magnesium, like in the jar here. But this has the ability to maybe balance everything out. So what I've started to do, and even if I don't need minerals, I'm taking these to have my body regulate these things a little bit. And I've even started now, even when I have somebody taking a mineral, give them this too, because then they can use it better. And uh, I have a few in my office, but again, they run out quickly. But these are something you could go to Earth Fair, a good health food store, and they should know. If you say, I want a cell salt, but there's 12, but you want the plasma, it's called bioplasm. It's all 12 in one. This would be not as a supplement, but as a balancing agent. It's kind of give you all of them. And again, because it's homeopathic, your body will use what it needs and get rid of what it does. You always say cell, it's C-E-L-L. -L. Yeah, cell. like the cells in our body. Mm -hmm. Cell, like C-E-L-L, -L, uh, like the cell. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's hard to understand some of these words. But I've gotten some places, and again, these are homeopathic, so you only need one. <laughs> If you get them from Highlands, they're a little bit bigger than the tiny little pills. The, and, and they're um, just dissolved easily. So I'll take one or one in the morning, maybe one at night if I remember. And I just kind of use them uh, as a balancing agent. So if you have issues with um, minerals, that might be a good thing to try. Or if you, it's te technically like if you work out a lot and you work out in the sun and you're losing a lot of minerals through sweating and stuff, this might be a good I, I have a, an idea, I haven't tested it, um, like the heart things, you know, the heart arrhythmia is the thing, especially when you do work out and stuff, this might be something that could really help to be more balancing. It's, like I said, I'm kind of experimenting with it, it's not a done deal, but I'm thinking it's probably going to be a good thing. <laughs> okay. Just a step back, uh, yes. rock salt, soap bath, uh -huh. that. Uh, is there a recipe for that? Like um, if you're doing like a little foot bath, I'd like a half a cup to a cup. <coughs> now you only want to do it about 10, 15 minutes tops because you're absorbing it. You don't want to be sitting in there for an hour because you'll be really burning up. And is that if you know you're studying deficient or is that Well, general? you know, if you have an idea there again, if, you, if you've been eating the bananas and it's not working, <laughs> it's probably sodium. <laughs> It, and so it be leg cramping would be part of that. Um, always legs, leg cramps, and if you're laying in bed at night, you can't go to sleep and your legs hurt all the time. And if the banana hasn't been working, try the sodium. You might be surprised. But do you have that in one leg? The problem would it have could it could it manifest itself just one leg or would it be both legs? Well, I've only had it like in both legs. I notice it at the same time, but who knows? You know? I've got one foot. You have one? Okay, there you go. I've got one foot. And one foot. Yeah. Well, then, there you go. <laughs> Try it. Again, you can't really hurt yourself doing it. You don't want to do it too much, but if you do it, it helps. This is another one. This is kind of, this is what I've used, and I do know this works. You know, people that are retaining water, um, 
people that have had heart issues and they start retaining water a lot, uh, usually they start giving the diuretics and they, can, they put that potassium, well you're dumping potassium and they're giving the potassium and it's still not working or just retaining fluid. I've taken people that put them in a sodium bath and they're on their way. That body starts dumping that water off. And that's where I've come to the conclusion, I think it's for heart things a lot of times because I think it's that sodium potassium more than we think. And it's not the potassium side of it. So. Does it help them? Like, I've, for three years now, I've had a, the vitamin D3 deficiency. Mm -hmm. We can't seem to get it up to normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a vitamin, it's not a mineral. Right. But, that but it does have a calcium thing along there. Calcium, vitamin D, I don't know. It's not something that, again, I've looked at, but it wouldn't hurt to try it to see if it would uh, work. I, I, again, vitamin D is one of those. I, the book hasn't been written on that one yet. <laughs> People are doing a lot of playing around with high doses. I'm not sure that's always a good thing, but I don't think just supplementing high doses are going to fix the problem. I think it's another issue that's, and maybe it is like a mineral thing that probably is going to be because of the mineral deficiency. Can't hurt. It's a leaky gut and you're not absorbing. Right. How a leaky gut? Does this help absorption? No. you got to fix the gut. That's a small intestine. you got to fix that. you got to take away the antagonist first. So there's bacteria, virus, metals, fungus. you got to fix that. Give up the gut. And then you start absorbing that. Um, salt, as far as the, what you eat, the table salt, how does that play in the kind of salt? Well, it's sodium chloride, and everything I read, sodium chloride is bad. It's just not good for our system. It almost depletes us of it as opposed to gives us nutrition. And so, so sea salt, and that's why you can't eat too much salt when you're eating the right kind because your body won't hold on to it. Um, but sodium chloride, and again, I'm not an expert, I'm not a chemist, but Everything I'm reading and looking at, they're saying, just don't eat that. Just so the sea salt? The sea salt would be fine, yeah. The sea salt is fine, the Celtic salt is fine. The Himalayan salt? Himalayan, that's probably a good one, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's all rocks. <laughs> but uh, something about the sodium chloride, our body's not meant to have. And for that soaking, now you said like rock salt. What about Epsom salt? Is that is no? That that's magnesium. That's magnesium. That's okay. not sodium. Of course, that's good for other things. You know, if you need magnesium or if you need to, you know, detox, you can use Epsom salts. Um, and that uh, baking soda would be another option there too. Now, baking soda is more alkalining. That helps your body to be alkaline, so it dumps toxins and does things like that. Um, so there's other options and soak baths, but. Of course, I would not, now, I can't say I would not, because we, for like heavy detoxing, we've used rock salt in the bath, but I'm saying use a foot bath just to absorb some of that, because that would be overkill, I think, for the sodium itself in a bathtub. Mm -hmm. So bathtub soap bath is usually two cups in a regular bath of either baking soda or Epsom salts, but the rock salt would be more in the foot bath. Can you mix it I don't usually mix the two. I mean, I guess you could, but usually we want to do something. <laughs> so we're targeting one thing so we can get the benefit from one of them or the other. And at bath two, it should only be warm water. It shouldn't be hot water. And you should only usually do that tops 15, maybe 20, but because you don't want to do too much because then you're putting your body into a crisis, and that's better to do it morning and night as opposed to do it longer at one sitting. Okay? All right, here we go. All right, let's see, where do we want to go next? Um, let's, uh, let me introduce this one. This is a product I'm not using as much right now. I had less promoting it. There are some papers up here if you're interested. Beta Glucan is this product. It's a great product, but um, unfortunately this specific line is again an up line and they keep raising the price to make you know people to make money and I just feel that's crazy if we can just buy it outright we're better off <laughs> but this is beta glucan 
is an immune booster, but it's different than other immune boosters like vitamin C. Vitamin C, and there's another product some of you use, it's called Ecomer, it's made from shark oil. It's an immune booster, it's going to the immune system, it's going to boost the immune system to work better. This product, this goes to the abnormal cell or the pathogen or something in the body that the immune system needs to attack and it flags it. So the immune system can come and find it. Now this is supposed, they have a lot of research out here for like abnormal cells, cancer cells, because what happens in cancer cells, they are cloaked to the immune system. And so the cancer cells develop and uh, become very aggressive. The immune system doesn't really see them until they get to a point and then you get a diagnosis saying, okay, well, you're, can you're in third stage, fourth stage cancer, you're going to die. And it's like, well, why did my immune system do anything about it? Well, because it cloaked itself to it. This, supposedly, from the research, goes to those cells, tags them, and uncloaks them so that the immune system can find them. Uh, it's a great product. Um, we have fun with doing it. It's, uh, what's called? This one's called RVB300. Uh, that stands for resveratrol, vitamin C, and beta glucan. But beta glucan is the product that we're talking about here. Beta glucan. Beta -glucan. Uh, this is capsules. They do have another product that's just the beta glucan. It's called sub beta glucan 500. Uh, this is another product this company makes. It, they call it Trini Lotion. It's beta glucan in a lotion. And this is amazing. I mean, you can use this on burn skin. It heals up things like in two days. <laughs> it's amazing. But I will say homeopathics can do that too. <laughs> but um, it's a good product. We keep it around. We've used it on, you know, burns and things. Um, rashes seem to be good. Um, but again, it's acting. You're bringing your immune system to the healing of it. It's not the action of this specifically but it's the beta glucan. And they have other products. This company, A.J. Lanigan is the man who's the expert in the world. <laughs> and that, this is like his company. That's why I always try to go to the expert as opposed to doing it. But you can find other beta glucan products. This is probably just the purest anywhere. What is his name? A.J. Lanigan. And this, had, this is an independent paper. Feel free later to come and pick these up. Um, this is an article that some researchers did on the beta glucan and specifically AJ Lanigan's product and they came to the conclusion that it's, you know, the best in the world. Mm -hmm. So it is a good product. I have a few extra bottles, but again, I think this bottle right now, it's a 60 tablets is selling for $60. So, and this sells for, I think, 30 um, So as thing prices go up, I figure if you want it, you can find it, but I don't carry it. <laughs> it doesn't do me any good to have a lot of inventory and then I can't carry a lot of other things. Um, okay, a few, when we were just talking about minerals, um, minerals also need trace minerals to be used in our body. Uh, I use a product, uh, it's called tr uh, Concentrase, Trace Minerals. This has some of those four big ones that we talked about. Plus it has about 80 trace minerals. Now, people don't realize this, but things even like arsenic, you need a very trace amount of that. Even though it's poison in big amounts, it's needed to absorb the other ones. And gold and nickel and all those metals that we know are bad if we get too much in our body, but trace amounts are needed for our body. Copper, that's one reason why a lot of people we say our food's depleted of its minerals because these trace minerals have been um, used up. <laughs> They're not in our food anymore. So those kind of things are uh, you can get and put back. This actually is a product they take uh, from, like in Salt Lake City, the, the lake out there has all those rich minerals and they purify them and they use it. Uh, I've seen um, demonstrations of this when they take like a light bulb and they could uh, use electrode and put it into certain things and the light bulb, like alfalfa, we know that alfalfa is a good product, uh, but it takes horrible. <laughs> um, cherry potato, <laughs> barley greens and all those good things, you know. Uh, 
They're good things for us, and they light up the light bulb. But you'd be amazed if you could, if I could do this. I probably need to make. We need to do that sometime. Put it into this, and you never, you know, a light bulb. You think it just can only shine as bright as it is, right? Well, I saw the demonstration. It lit up the light bulb. They put it in a product like this, and the light bulb glowed a lot more. It was pretty phenomenal. But what they were showing is if the conductivity of this <laughs> is huge, but the benefit in our body is huge too. Um, products like this, and we have, um, oh, I didn't bring it. The Endure is like the electrolytes. And I know for my boys, they love to hike, they're Boy Scouts. I send electrolytes with them in a bottle, and they put it into their waters. This stuff tastes nasty, though. It's one of the worst things you'll ever taste. So you got to get past the taste thing. Um, when I use this, um, I put it in a little Dixie cup and squeeze some lemon in it and sh you know, chase it. But um, it's very powerful, especially to keep your minerals, again, balanced with the trace minerals in it. Uh, taking this will never, like if you have low magnesium, taking this will never make it come up to perfect because there's not enough of the magnesium in this product. This is more of a balancing agent. But with the trace minerals, it does help. So another good product, um, a lot of times this is for people that really need it, but, but there's times when I just feel like it's a good thing for me to have and I'll just take it for doing that. Okay. All right. Um, it's quarter to eight. Now, I don't know how uh, to, everybody, you know, I don't want to overdo this for everybody. I don't know what your time is. Um, I want to leave some time for questions at the end, too. Um, a few other things I have up here. I have a sheet. Did I tell you about the bread? I have some for bread. Uh, we advocate in healthy living, of course, uh, people that want to do some things, making your own bread. That means grinding your own grain. And it sounds like a lot. And this is where I always tell people, if you're not already doing this, you can't start doing everything. You want to pick one or two things that you could do and start doing that for a while, like a month or two, until it gets to be habit for you. People are always coming up and saying, oh, tell me what you do and I'll start doing it. I'm like, you can't do what I've done. I've been doing this for 15 years. And I've worked up to this. But pick a few things, like, like doing bread. And even if you're not into you know, grinding your own grains, buy some grain, good grains, and like whole grains, quinoa, millet, you know, good things, spelt is a wheat, but it's a good wheat. Um, there's just things you can do, and a bread vector would be a great solution for that, or a place to source, um, to start making your own bread, and your family will love you. <laughs> Bread is one of those things, I think it's a comfort food. It really is. You smell it, and you eat it, and, and some people think, ask me too, you know, when you start making bread, they go through two loaves a day, you know, because it's like, wow, this is so good. That won't last. It really won't, because then it'll become, after a week or two, your family says, oh, bread again, you know. <laughs> it's still nice, but they're not going to leave two loaves of bread. So, so don't worry about that, but it's getting a habit for having good food. The stuff we buy at the grocery store, first of all, if you buy a loaf of bread, it'll last you three months because there's so many preservatives in it. It's never going to mold. Well, tell me, bread is meant to mold. <laughs> and if you're, you make bread at home, it's not going to last three months. It's probably not going to eat last three days before it sees sun, but it won't last anyway because people eat it. Um, so bread is a good place to start. A lot of people are doing it. There's a lot of research out there. And probably somebody you know is doing it and can help you. Uh, the first couple times you probably get bricks. <laughs> Everybody gets bricks usually at the first. Um, you know, there's a lot of solutions. There's bread machines. I personally have a KitchenAid. I like, I use the KitchenAid to knead it for me. Because I can turn it on and walk and go do something else and come back. Then I put it in the pans and bake it myself. Um, so that's my, the way I do it. So other people have bread machines that they use. It's, there's a lot of solutions out there that can work. It'll become so easy. To making bread in, as some of you are older, bread for the, used to be kneading that baby for 15, 20 minutes and you're thinking it's not worth it. But now you put all the ingredients into the KitchenAid and flip it on. It needs it for you. You take it out put it in the pan. You know, in two minutes, you got a loaf of bread ready to go, you know. So it's not what it used to be, and we can be healthy. So bread's one good place to start. A lot of people are doing it. 
Uh, nut butters are good. Peanut butter is not a nut, it's a bean. And peanut butter that you buy usually has junk oils in it. It has mold from, uh, nuts do anyway, but it's moldy, it's horrible, it's got sugar in it to make it taste good. But you can make your own nut butters out of anything else on the butter. Cashew is on the low end, but it's still good. Um, you know, pie, I've done pine nuts and walnuts and pecans, and you use your own nuts. You grind them up, you use a food processor, that's how I do it, use a food processor. Put your own oils in it, use good oils, olive oils. Okay, for this, you should not cook with olive oil. You should use, be using coconut oil, palm oil, some of those. Um, Pardon? Grape seed oils. Grape seed, okay. Just be careful with that a little bit because that's all, you know, there's grades. You know, you're coming down. Grape seeds here, but coconut and palm oil are a little bit below that. So, mm -hmm. the, the grape seeds are okay. Um, let's see. And you can put, if you want to use stevia, that's another one. Stevia is not an artificial sweetener, it's an herb. It's really probably the only true herb out there um, that's not going to give you an insulin spike. Um, artificial sweeteners are chemicals and they will still give you an insulin spike. So they not they might be zero calories, but they're chemicals and they're also going to create the same spike of your uh, system as if you ate a candy bar. They have been proven that and plus they're horrible. Um, aspartame is poison at 76 degrees, turns to poison at 76 degrees, and our body temperature is 98, so you figure it out, okay? <laughs> so throw all that stuff away if you're using it. Go get yourself some good stevia, and you know, there's flavors of that. I'm finding this, they have a whole world of stevia now. My favorite is club soda, which is bubbly and has a little acidic, but club soda and root beer stevia, just like root beer soda. <laughs> so that's my dream. But they have stevia in almost any flavor that you can find. Chocolate, you put in your good coffees and um, chocolate, vanilla, everything. So try, if you haven't tried stevia, go out there and get yourself a couple of bottles and start um, trying it. Uh, it's just really great. Um, yes? This is going to sound like a really bad question, probably, but you talk about grains of oil, and you mm -hmm. can go to Harris Teeter, you would all be and buy olive oil or whatever. Where do you buy olive oil? Like, how do you know you're getting a good olive oil? Well, cold pressed first. Then you can get organic. Now, that's questionable, organic. If right. it's not certified, it's not truly. But you want cold pressed because if it's been heated, that's what's making it bad, too. So it, you kind of have to decide. You know, we can, I believe we can't, unless we're really wealthy, <laughs> We can't do everything perfect, all organic, all perfect. So we have to choose, but we can choose better. So if you're getting cold press, you know it's not been cooked. If it's like usually the big bottle of olive oil that's basically been cooked, it's not been, um, it's not organic. It's still olive oil better than vegetable oil, but you know you're getting, it's not as good quality. And if that's all you can do, it's better than the vegetable oil. Choose that. But there's where you have to kind of just decide what you can do and what you can't. Coconut oil, same way. There's bad coconut oil, too. But coconut oil is probably at the top right now. Uh, coconut oil has antimicrobial properties. Um, it's, when, if you have, we talk about cholesterol problems. The only way to solve a cholesterol problem is not statin drugs, by the way. Um, they're becoming horrible. Even the doctors, the heart doctors are coming out and saying it's all a lie. <laughs> Statin drugs are not helping people with their cholesterol problem. The cholesterol is like a fat. And the only thing we'll get fats out of our, a bad fat out of our system is to put a good fat in. And I believe, I'm saying this not because I've read about it, I came to know a doctor whose father was the head cardiologist in the Philippines. He had seven sons, and all of them were doctors, some in the World Health Organization. He wrote a book, and I read it. He said, first of all, coconut oil has always been one of the best oils. Up until the World War II, America bought coconut oil. 
So what happened in World War II? We went to war. It was political. They shut the whole system down to buying coconut oil from the Philippines because that's where they get it. They, um, at the same time, companies like Monsanto were coming in selling the concept of soybean oil. Guess what? Cheap product, chemicals. They were doing. They were doing GMOs back in there. Uh, they were giving the government. They were getting the government to come in, buy up these soybeans, make oil out of them. It was political. So what they told us, the media told us, oh, these soybean oils are great. They knew that was lousy back then, <laughs> but it was it was political. And I read the guy's book, and he's I. If you go to the Philippines, nobody has heart problems. Nobody has cholesterol problems because they never stopped eating the coconut oil. But America stopped. And when did a lot of the heart problems begin? After the 1940s. So there's a correlation. And he showed, you know, in his book, he showed the research, he showed the chemical, what happens in our body when we put the bad vegetable oils, it just clogs it. It's what we have going. But so I, I can kind of speak. <laughs> Uh, on this because I wrote the book. I talked to the man and I know that's what it was. And so I say coconut oil, whenever possible, is the best choice. And his and, name? Pardon? The author's name? I knew somebody was going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a couple of years. Um, I can get it. I can get it too. Yeah, right? Your friend was sharing. I'll find it. I didn't. Ha he wouldn't let me have this book because <laughs> it was his only book from his father, and they didn't get it. But um, his his son actually is a doctor in Lancaster. He's a lung doctor, and it starts with a D, and I can't say it. Okay. <laughs> he and his wife actually, and his wife's a pediatrician too. You know, it's sad though. Um, my husband had a heart attack a year ago, this coming August, and. Um, when the nutritionist came in to talk to him about his diet. And I mentioned, you know, we use good oils, we use coconut oil, and, and she about fell on the floor. Mm -hmm. And she said, don't you ever use coconut oil. Mm -hmm. So what they're being taught out there in the schools is, is just different than, you know, what a lot of us are reading. And I think that's sad because they're giving these heart patients all these instructions to go home with for years. They yeah. tell us to avoid taking a home. Mm -hmm. And we use canola now as the way. We've been killing ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's too, I think we have everything we read, you know, just because it sounds good, <laughs> we still have to be very careful. That's why I'm saying here, I met the expert. You know? I read the book. So I feel I can say this. And that's what I'm trying in my world because. You know, for years they've been telling us soy is great, you know, vegetarians eat soy, and you know, I'm like, okay, I don't see that, and I don't see it in my practice, I don't see it, and other people are coming out, and I'm not saying soy is always bad, but it's, it creates hormonal issues, and people are gone this, because it's, it's a fake estrogen, it actually creates a fake estrogen in the body, and so it messes up things. So people that are eating a lot of soy now, um, to say that it's bad across the board, I'm not going to say that, but I see the other side. And so you have to be careful what you read, and there's so much politics out there, yeah. <laughs> because there's so much politics that even things that sound good, we have to really you know, be careful about what we choose to believe and what we don't. So, yeah, it's, and if it's hard. with a milk allergy, a lot of your substitutes are with soy. Well, and baby formulas. I mean, it scares me. To death. <laughs> uh, I, this, I, I'll just throw this out. I had a midwife that I used to work with in Pennsylvania. If they couldn't use milk, you know what she used? Carrot juice. Carrot juice has as much um, calcium and stuff as milk does. And the babies ran around with red faces. <laughs> but you know, it didn't hit them, hurt them. But they could give their, especially in the Amish community, they gave their babies their carrot juice. And no milk at all, because they knew the soy, the whole soy concept was not an alternative. So, you know, there's the weird things like that. You're thinking, oh, okay, what's the alternative? But, you know, maybe not. There's other things. And, and I, I, the whole soy thing really kind of gets me crazy, because, especially in baby formulas, too. <laughs> How about some goat milk or something? Did you say you had a good uh, source 
Well, I'm there. Um, we have it some in our um, uh, that co-op on there. It says a food co-op, but we also have another one. It's out of jo Grain Loft. Did you do with that? Get anything with that? I think it's down in like Greenville, and they come up 85, and they go to Fort Mill, and they'll stop in any exit. But it's Grain Loft, and they come every four weeks, and you can order, and they bring it up here, and you can get it. And you can call it again, it's a family business. So grain, grain Loft. LMFT. Mm -hmm. and, and you go with grainloft.com, I think is their thing. You can see what they have and they'll bring it to you. I mean, you don't get it, but they're coming up at 85 and going for it now. And there's a guy that does milk that way, and he needs them at the same time, and they come there and do it too. Did you? What about the, like, the Ezekiel bread? The what? The Ezekiel bread? Ezekiel bread? Yeah, to buy it? And well, stuff? Like, on how to make yeah, to be able to make it yeah I mean it's got a lot it's Ezekiel bread if you ever read what's in it it's mostly beans as opposed to flowers and they're sprouted <laughs> I try it a couple times I'm like thinking wow this is pretty intense <laughs> so I'm like, okay I'm not gonna do that <laughs> it was too much but but I, Ezekiel bread is supposedly it's like I said sprouted beans it's not flour grain. So it's supposed to be really good. So there, it makes there sense. is some whole wheat flour in it. Is it that's what we're has. Okay. And, and there's and different kind of I think the Ezekiel bread is not all the same. I think there's different kinds. Right, there are, stuff. but most of because I had to look into it because uh -huh. I could have the wheat. Yeah. And they all have a little wheat flour. That's yeah. Something there. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um and as, as far as the sprouted grains, that is is you get your most nutrition when you sprout your grains. Yeah, and that's because the hull has been broken open and it's more accessible to do that too. And it does the ferment. Does it start fermenting process? It's fermenting the process. Fermenting is a good thing too. Fermenting anything. <laughs> One other question too. Mm -hmm. what, for salad dressings, when you want to make your own salad dressing and you don't want to use the olive oil, sometimes it doesn't get. It's not the flavor you want. Do you use coconut oil in there? And do you melt your Well, coconut oil is hard to use it's because it's solid. hard until you get to 76 degrees. So, like now it's no problem. It's hot. And it stays liquid. But in the middle of the winter, it's going to be like shortening. Right. And so that's the problem of coconut oil. Because, I mean, you can melt it, but as soon as it cools down, right. you put on the salad, it's going to congeal. Um, that may be when you have the grape seed. That's what I use, grape seed. Oh, when I don't want the olive oil. That's another choice. Did you have another I'm choice? Thinking about MCT, which is the meat and chain of all this rod. Okay, no, I don't know like, that. It's just like the coconut oil, so it's liquid. And it stays liquid. Even in okay. the refrigerator, it stays liquid. And can you, you can buy, yeah. buy it just like oil? Okay. MCT. Hemp oil? MCT. Like, see, it's the chain triglyceride. Okay. So it's just like what coconut is a medium chain. Okay, but it doesn't get hard. No. Okay, there's a question. And there, I mean, there's others out there you can play with, but just be careful. You know, they all have different problems. You know, when, something else you can do that I do is put cashews or a nut in with my oil in my dressing and put it on vitamins. Okay. And it, it, it actually keeps everything together so it never separates. Oh, good. Which is really mm -hmm. So you're making your own oil from mm -hmm. it. So it's not doesn't become liquid liquid, but it's it you know goes down to a liquid. It's just a thicker. Mm -hmm. You don't have to munch it either. Yeah. Much okay. Yeah. It, it, it fast. Yeah. Some of those, <laughs> depending on the equipment you have, yeah. <laughs> some of those nuts give you a lot of oil because you don't even need to put extra oil if you're making nut butters. It depends on that. Too. Okay. All right. So and butters. Um, another thing I had on mine, I think, like, it depends on, you know, how creative you want to be, how much time you have, like, making your own, like, macaroni. Everybody likes macaroni, but it's horrible. <laughs> you know, it's white flour. You know? And, yes, you can buy whole grains, but people don't realize you can make your own. They used to, you can buy it. You may use the same flours. You basically use whatever flour you're using. You can use it with any, anything you can make flour out of, you can make a macaroni out of it. You usually just add like water and flour, or you could add a little egg in there. And depending on, you can get fancy machines for your KitchenAids and stuff, or you could just roll it out.
cut in strips, and there you got the spaghetti macro. And so that's an easy solution, and it's not hard. You just it goes fast um, for like noodles and stuff. That's another thing. A lot of people don't do that. Um, I'm Italian, so we've been doing it. For uh -huh. <laughs> um, not as convenient as opening the box, but um, if you're looking for healthy things, it's um, cheaper. Yeah, yeah, it's very much cheaper. <laughs> yeah. um, canning season, here we are. <laughs> I know Jerry, she's, that's her life these days, you know, <laughs> picking and canning. Um, can, it's time to can. Uh, a lot of people, it's scary, it's not. It's really easy. You go get yourself a ball book, ball blue book. Everybody needs a ball blue book. It'll tell you how to do anything. And you don't need, you know, some people think, oh, we have to have pressure cookers. You, if you have a stock pot and you can't can everything, maybe, but if it's an acidic food, all you need is a stock pot, some jars, and you boil them. They seal with boiling water. And there again, I bet you have a friend that's doing it, or you can go YouTube. YouTube has everything. You can learn on the internet how to do canning. It's really easier than you think. Once you get started, I mean, you have, I have three girls. We have assembly lines. It goes good. Um, but it's, we're in a place now where you can get good food. Even if you have to buy local produce, it's better than getting at the store. And if you can it yourself, you know what you got in it. A little lemon juice, a little bit of sea salt. You know, you don't have to put the preservatives in it. And it'll last, listen, I have cans that last three years sometimes. When they tell you, well, you don't want to use it if you don't need it the first year, I'm like, I'm not throwing this out. I don't need it. <laughs> it hasn't killed us yet. Um, you know, that's, they've gotten to so much. You know, they tell us all these things that you've got to be so safe. And I mean, come on, our grandparents used to leave food out on the table all day long. Or <laughs> it didn't kill them. It's what we do. And we have to get back in the mindset of, you know, we're in control. I think that's one thing that I try to empower people. Not that we can't learn from people, and even as far as doctors, I'm glad we have them. But they don't have to tell us how to do everything. We have a mind. We can use our mind. We can learn from other people. Uh, we just have to be empowered to take back, <laughs> take back for ourselves to be able to do. And that's the main reason why I try to do some of these, especially in this world. Because yes, you can come and see me and I'll help you with your chronic issues, but I want you to be able to take care of your family at home. If there's something that happens, I want you to feel confident that you can help them with a homeopathic kit or some herbs. And you don't have to run to the doctor because you know when you're going, more than likely you're going to get one of two things. You're going to get an antibiotic or steroid, and neither one of them are very good. Steroids should, you never should, well, I can't say never. <laughs> a steroid is going to suppress your system. It's going to shut down your immune system. How can your body fight if you do that? It's not going to work. That's creating a bigger issue, okay? Antibiotics. A lot of times they're giving it for things that like viral infections will not help anyway. And we've all told you tonight some things you can use even with bacterial infections without having the antibiotic. It's going to suppress some things deeper in your system. It's also going to kill your gut flora. And then your fungal is going to overgrow and you're going to have a bigger issue. So, you know, there's always a consequence to what we do. And so we try to empower you to make choices, not saying that that's wrong. If I needed an antibiotic, I know where I can get it. But it should not be routine, because then it becomes a problem for us. And that's why we get to the place where we're not as healthy and we can't help ourselves when we really need it. Because we have the bacterial things now that are not being helped even with antibiotics because they've been used too much. Okay, let me throw that. So. Okay, does anybody have any questions? I didn't go through everything here, and we'll take time if you have specific, if you want to come to the table, but I'll still take questions. Generally, on uh, something that maybe I haven't talked about, we'll try. And you may mention this, or you may want to uh, talk to me later. But as far as water, um, is alkaline water, and I, I didn't know. We can try it a little bit, but I didn't know if you have an opinion on that. Yes, I do. I do about everything. <laughs> First of all, you need to drink it. Okay. <laughs> do not drink pop. Pop is poison. <laughs> Pop is terrible. Soda, sorry, I'm from Pennsylvania. Um, soda, Coke, whatever you want to call it. This stuff is 
a 2.5 on an alkaline scale. We should be somewhere between 6.8 and 27.0. That should be good balance. Things that are on the high end are called alkaline. Things on the other low end are acid. Pop and soda comes in about 2.5. So you put it in your body. What do you think it does to your body? Pulls it down. If your body's acid, it's sick. It's diseased. It cannot function. Okay? So pop is the first thing you want to take off your out of your life. Coffee is not great, but if you make it with good water, you can be in a good category. <laughs> so if you can make it with alkaline water. Because coffee's not the bad part, it's you know how it works. I don't think everybody needs to drink alkaline water, but alkaline water is some of the best water. And as far I mean I'm not going to get into machines because there's lots of them and a lot of Again, politics there. I have an enagic. It's probably the Cadillac. It's about the one that the Japanese have been using for years and years. Um, it sells for, the good machine sells for about $4,000. Again, they're not a true upline, but that's why they cost so much, because people earn money by recommending. That's the downside. Um, there's other companies. I have read the research. And not saying, that I had one person that bought a cheap model and he used it a while and he got rid of it and bought the good one. <laughs> so if you can, the Anagic product is the best product out there. Okay. It's going to do, you're going to get what you're paying for. That's the fine. other ones, I can't talk about them, but um, if you can afford it and swing it, I would go for the Anagic. If I, my broke tomorrow, I'd buy a new one and it would be. Does that help a little bit? That's what we're looking at. It's good. It, it's the best product out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Water. Yeah. Drink lots of it. Mm -hmm. um, minimum. Take your body weight, divide it in half. That's how many ounces minimum you should drink. Every day. Three quarters is even better. <laughs> Three quarters. And that will be almost. What? But not with meals. What? No, not with meals. In between meals. <laughs> it's good to drink a big couple glasses first time, first when you get up in the morning. Drink two big glasses when you get up in the morning before breakfast. Get stuff moving and cleansing. Oh, here's one. I, you, did, I want, you need to know this one if you don't. Okay? Because we have kidney stones, UTIs, kidney issues, toxins. Everybody has them at some time. So here's a flush. You need to write this down if you don't have it. If you have an issue, you don't, um, you don't need cranberry juice necessarily, okay? 32 ounces of water, good water. <laughs> uh, the juice of one lemon and the juice of one lime. And if you got cayenne, you can use pepper sprinkles or drops if you got it, it doesn't matter. T 5 to 20. If you don't like hot, you want to go with the thigh. <laughs> if you don't mind hot, go for the 20. And you want to drink this within 10 to 15 minutes. Now, you don't want to leave home after you've done this. Because <laughs> it's going to flush your system. But we've taken people that had uh, kidney stones, um, urinary tract infections, and like got rid of them. Now, if it's bad, if you didn't do it right away, when you start feeling it, you might have to do it a couple times a day for maybe two or three days. But a lot of times, one or twice is all it takes. And the lemon and lime is going to alkaline your system too. That's part of the healing, and it helps. But this is one, and, and I don't. I have people call me all the time. Now I'm not, I'm not telling you what to do, but make a list of these possibilities and put them in your cabinet. Because usually people call me and say, "Well, what should I do?" I said, "Well, didn't you do the phone? Oh, I forgot to do it. <laughs> you have what you need to do. Okay." So make a list of some of these things that we're talking about and post them somewhere. Because again, when you're sick, you're not going to think about it. Your brain falls out. <laughs> so have a list so it's easy accessible. I'm thinking about it. What's something else? Can you think? Oh, the gallbladder ones. We have to talk about the A gallbladder. And again, these days, everybody has gallbladders. Your gallbladder's here on your right hand side up on your rib. And if you have a sticking pressure pain, it's probably gallbladder. Gallbladder and liver digest fats. So if you just ate a lot of fats, which include nuts and seeds, all avocados, olives, they're in the fat 
category. It doesn't have to be the, you know, olive oil. It can be an olive. <laughs> Avocados too. Nuts and seeds. Meats, butters, milk, all those. If it hurts right here, it's sticking or pressure. Also, if it's about right here, it feels like you're having a heart attack. You might be having a heart attack. But <laughs> it might also be a gallbladder attack. I don't know why. Nobody's been able to tell me why that happens right there. But if it's pressure right here, and you're like, can't breathe kind of thing, it might be gallbladder. So, to do a gallbladder cleanse, I have the recipe up here. I only brought one sheet, but if you want it, you can email me. Um, basically, it's just a one evening. It doesn't even take that long. It's not too bad. Some few people have a bad experience, but most of the time it's not. It's basically, you use Epsom salts to clean out your system. You stop eating around 2 o'clock. Clean out your system with the Epsom salts because it works kind of like a laxative. By 10 o'clock, you're going to eat. Drink half a cup of olive oil. With, then you've taken a grapefruit, one grapefruit, and squeeze the juice into that, and it emulsifies. I know it sounds horrible, but it emulsifies the oil, so it's not so like oil. Uh, and then you basically drink that down, and then you go right to bed, laying on your back for about half an hour. Then you go to bed, sleep, and you don't get up again if you can help it. And by the next morning, you start passing stones. Now, they're not kidney stones. If anybody's had a kidney stone, you know they hurt. These are not calcified. They're kind of like rubbery or jelly, kind of. And so you pass there. I've seen some this big, <laughs> and or just, you know, more sandy. But uh, Holda Clark was the expert in this area, and she said you could get as many as 2,000 out of your gallbladder and liver area. And until you did, you're probably not clean. Uh, but every time those little kidney stones or gallstones go down through those ducts, that's what the pain is when you're trying to digest, you're dumping bile to digest fast, and those stones are going into the ducts, and that's the pain you're feeling. But if you have that, and you do the gallbladder cleanse, a lot of times I've seen people in excruciating pain do the gallbladder cleanse, and they're like, yeah, it's not going to maybe fix the whole problem. You can't do something once and it's fixed. But when you're in that kind of pain, it can fix things. And so it's, it's amazing. I've seen it done over and over. Pretty, yeah, that's another one of those emergency things. You don't have to have your gallbladder out. You can fix it. <laughs> so, and it doesn't cost you. Yes. Going back to the UTI plant, uh -huh. if you have um, cayenne pepper, how much pepper? Just, I use sprinkles, you know, like shake one, two, three. And just okay. maybe five shakes or five drops. Okay, unless it comes out black. In salt, that's all to taste, really. I mean, it's cleaning, but it's also to taste. Cayenne pepper also, that's another, cayenne pepper is another great thing to have around the house. Um, it cleans your blood. Uh, I've never seen it, but I had another herbalist friend of mine who said that cayenne can stop a heart attack. And he did experience it. He also said the way you know that it's healthy for a heart attack is that it, when a person that has a heart attack takes cayenne, it's not hot. You could put a whole bottle down and it's not going to taste hot. I don't know. That's what he said. He proved it on his on the front of him. He was having a heart attack in his car. <laughs> he gave him cayenne and it did not taste hot. And he stopped the heart attack. If it stopped, if it tastes hot, then you're not really having a heart attack. You're probably having a heart attack. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> but, you know, I'm trying to cayenne. <laughs> so, so cleaning the cleaning blood and heart things, cayenne is good. Here's another little thing. I it doesn't. It's not across the board, but you know, I like to say God has made. You know, because we're kind of stupid. He knew that. You know, he said these people are really kind of stupid. So I have to make it very clear. So guess what? What color is cayenne? Red. And what color is our blood and our heart? It's red. And you know, I could talk about. Uh, for a while about this, things that are correlate with color and shape. Think about what do you think? Think about cauliflower. What do you think that could help? The brain. The brain. I mean, isn't that cool? Cauliflower and the brain. I and mean, there's a lot of those kind of things. Also, herbs. This is another thing where you have poison ivy. Within a 10-foot radius, you can usually find the antidote, and it's usually plantain or jewelry. The antidote for poison ivy grows within a 12-foot radius of the plant. What does that look like? 
what, plantain? Plantain's a weed, you got all of your yard. It's that wispy stuff and it grows a little shoot up snaky things up the middle or they're fat. And the ribs don't grow, like the ribs on a plantain are, like here's the middle and they come out from it. They go straight up like this and fan out from the bottom to the top. And I could show you if we found one. They're in your yard. They're weeds all over the place. And we just cut them. <laughs> it's, it's not the banana plantain, by the way. There's that's the plantain. This is the weed in your garden. But there, too, God has put all these, the bad plants, which they're not really bad. They're good, too. But the bad plants and their antidote usually grows within a very short distance. Of course, you've got to know what to look for. But it's almost always right together. So it's really cool. When you look at those kind of things, so in that flush you mentioned five to twenty drops. Uh -huh. If you don't have the drops, how much powder would you say? Shapes, like just go one, two, like I don't know, five shapes or pinches, whatever you got. Five to twenty of them. Yeah, or? whatever you can taste. Okay, mm -hmm. so the, with the um, kidney punch, you know the kidney punch is good when you do that. Okay, say that one. Palm have kidney punch. Okay. You know, okay. Not okay. Not three. Oh no, three kidneys. So you have one. So he should do the flow. He should. Mm -hmm. If you have some homeopathics, Berberis is the homeopathic that goes B-E-R-B-E-R-I-S. That's B-E-R-B-E-R-I-S. That's the kidney homeopathic that goes with that too. So if you and you're gonna if you want to get something to be 30C, which you're looking for. 30C or you know, you could do a 30X, but 30C would be that. And that would be one you want to put in the water and dose them by tablespoon. Instead of the drug Yeah. There. Kidney stones are bad. I have one. I don't have one. I'll have to die babies before I want to Yes. The heat, you know, like, you said that depletes. The sun, the sun, the sun, the sun and everything. Right? Yeah. Right. Like, Sweat. Just, yeah, that's the sodium that you're working on. That, that, yes, that's a big part of that. The sodium is what you're depleting. So electrolytes or even a glass of salt, not salt, sodium chloride, but like sea salt in a glass of water. Just dissolve it and drink it. But when you have a big issue with the muscles and things, that, that's what I think it's better to do the rock salt in the feet because you're absorbing it up through your tissues and things and drinking mm -hmm. it. But in a, a pinch, if you got somebody that's having, you know, a lot of cramping, like sunstroke or something, they can drink salt, and that would make a big difference. You got to. You have an issue. That's a quick thing. I got an issue yesterday. Oh no. <laughs> Electrolytes or but did you have some minerals at home? I think like the blue bottle. That's what you want to take. Yeah, it takes some like forty to eighty drops. It tastes horrible, but yeah, that would have made a big difference. Just, and I just, I was out five hours yesterday, and, okay. I just, I, and all of a sudden it just hit me. I, yeah. couldn't, I couldn't hardly move. Mm -hmm. And you can absorb it through skin, pour it on them. <laughs> you take, actually, you're taking kids, because autistic children, of course, they can't stand the taste. We've had them put them in a bathtub with warm water to open up the pores, and their mom had poured it over the back and just rubbed them on them and absorbed that, the minerals that way, too. So don't leave that out, because sometimes if you can't drink them, Put them on your body, like the robbers and things we do on the body. But liquid goes in. Um, on the same note, if you got bad water and you're taking a shower, well, people will tell me, well, I don't drink my water, but you're taking showers in it. And that's absorbing through your skin as much as if you're drinking it. If it's bad water, chlorine stuff goes in your system. So don't think if I don't drink it, it's not doing anything. Absorbing through your skin can do the same for good or bad, both ways. One question. You mentioned the um, the osteocolon. Yeah, osteocolon. <laughs> no, that it's more effective in water. No, it's not more effective. Only if it's multiple doses, then it's more effective. If you're going to take it once a month, you can just take tablets. Tablet. Okay. But if you need it more, then doing it in water gives you that just a little bit of difference. Mm -hmm. So. It's not just that it's in that house, the sickness is in the house. So yes. That's to go to the water. Go to the water, yes. And is that buying in chowder then? No, it's or is that it's really still a pass. Like, just take oh, a okay. and dissolve it in the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just shake it up when you, you know, hit it on your hand. That's the impact is the energy. Not just shake it like this. Okay.
Well, it's getting on to almost 8.30, and I'm more than willing to stay around and answer questions, but I don't want to hold you um, if you're wanting to go. We have, to, I used to have a group that would get me to about 10 or 11 at night. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> you stay. Yeah, I so love this. I love doing this. I love to help you. No, no problem. Cheryl, when you yes. said you made up yes. the of the boys from the Boy Scout trip, I'm like, uh -huh. like, what are you making up for that? I send a bottle of the, it's the Electrolytes blue bottle, it's different than the big one, but they take it with them, and they just put, you know, they know to put 10 to 20 so drops just in their water bottles each time. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's like, kind of like the salt concept, yeah. but it's minerals instead. And when they're on their 50 mile pace, <laughs> yeah. they can't take that much water. So it's a smaller bottle, just the same It's just, small yeah, it's a smaller, but it, it, it has the trace minerals, but also has more electrolytes, where this is pretty much just minerals. So it's a different product. Yeah. And you talked about the um, the kidney stones and the gallbladder. My husband has gout issues. Uh huh. And kidney stones too. Okay. Is there any anything up there that can help them? Well, gout. Yes, gout is a uric acid. It's kidney related because if the kidneys aren't filtering well, it's not filtering out uric acid, and that's what causes the gout. Um, um, wild cherry. <laughs> wild cherry is the herb for that. We do have some of that in one of our bottles. I think we have some. That's one of the ones we do carry. And it's we do we do tinctures because they're just a little more powerful. But they do have alcohol in them. So if you're not wanting alcohol, you can put it in warm water and evaporate some of it out. But that's how we do make ours with alcohol. That's what extracts the medicinal part of the plant. Yeah, they wanted to put him on medicine, but the side effects from that must be great, but I thought, okay. yeah. yeah, and there again, gout is just kind of the end result. It's kidney. <laughs> you got to get the kidneys fixed to get the gout problem solved. Um, you can't just band aid it. Well, we have things up here, and you know, you're welcome to come and look. If you have specific questions that you prefer to talk to me about, I'll be glad to try to help you. Um, I don't know everything, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> like I said, I have an opinion about everything. <laughs>